Hey guys, it's Mr. V and this is the last video of Apes Review videos topic 6.13 or 613 on energy conservation. So in this one, we're going to be talking about saving energy. Now there are things that individuals can do as well as um, nations or even companies that they can do to save energy. And the idea is that when you bring down individual and you know uh, large scale use of energy, that then can have greater impacts that we might not be so um, aware of. So one of the first things uh, you can do around your house is you can obviously adjust your thermostat. So if you're gonna reduce the heating and the air conditioning use, right? Um, I live in an area where it's very warm and hot. Um, so our air conditioner tends to be higher most of the time. Um, you know, some occasionally we get cold, but it's not that often. Um, you can also conserve water because water heaters, um, you know, water use in uh, washers um, and things like that, those are going to be an ice machine, ice makers. Those are going to be big users of waters as well. And of course, when you get appliances, you can get energy efficient appliances. So most appliances today have a sticker on them that says Energy Star. That's meant to let them know that um, these are not going to be um, as much, consuming so much power. And then of course, you can also do conservation landscaping. That's going to reduce the amount of pumps and use of uh, water in your home. So this is something called xeriscaping right here. This is where you uh, plant natives, but you don't use uh, your typical um, uh, grass and things like that, because that's gonna reduce the amount of energy you need to put the plants in, the amount of water you're gonna be pumping in all the time. Um, and also the uh, it's gonna reduce your maintenance, which can be fuel for uh, lawnmower or weed eater or electricity to plug those in. So that's gonna um, put a little bit of a dent in that personal use. And of course, you can also have large scale energy saving. Okay? The idea is that you can improve fuel economy. If vehicles are demanded to have by the government higher standards for fuel, um, then they'll get more mileage and they'll be designed more efficiently. Um, when the time comes to also switch to battery electric vehicles okay, or hybrid vehicles that don't use as much gasoline and um, they power their cars with lithium ion batteries, um, you can also have public transportation improvements. Right? If there's trains or buses that are more convenient, then that can be something that uh, will reduce the amount of individual cars, which will bring down that fuel um, amount needed. And of course, designing green buildings, um, which can help cool the area and can make uh, spaces that would you know, just typically be concrete and things like that uh, more usable uh, and also reducing uh, impacts of pollution and climate change. So here's a battery electric vehicle. Um, so they have a very similar design from a car on the outside, but on the inside, they're very different. So they've got a transmission, but you can charge these cars and they um, are much like a cell phone or a laptop in that they can be plugged in and they have a DC AC converter typically and uh, a lithium ion battery that can be used to run their vehicle. Now, this is a great thing, but the downside is you're still using resources to build the car and then you have to mine for the batteries, which I've mentioned a couple times is lithium. Um, and so that's great to provide energy and to be recharged. The downside is you're mining for that now instead of drilling for oil or uh, natural gas or something like that. So you, there's some changes there. That's why it's recommended if you're going to switch to a battery electric vehicle, you basically run out your car that you had before that and then you do because if everybody just continuously is switching just for style it's still having a it's having actually a worse impact so that's something to think about as well and then of course you got green buildings so this building looks like it's this dilapidated dilapidated building it doesn't look great but that uh, space right there is helping cool the building it's creating it's got more green area for reduction of co2 and absorption of pollutants as well um, and so, you know, it's a matter of maximizing the space that you have, and this is going to reduce energy costs for that building and can reduce energy costs for um, different spaces uh, in the city as well. So, so here's a bunch of articles that might help you uh, gather more information on reducing energy costs um, and energy consumption. So hopefully these will be helpful and hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much.